Hi, I, uh, I recently bought this lovely old Japanese engine, um, uh, an Enya 35. Um, lovely smooth bearings, um, heaps of compression, just a, a, a lovely engine at a very reasonable price. Um, it needs a little bit of cleaning up, um, but I'm sure this engine is going to run really sweet. Um, came with the um, silencer, muffler. Um, the um, the standard Enya silencer that comes with this model. Um, I have cleaned this up and uh, and it looks a lot better than it did. Um, it was quite gummed up with um, uh, probably the residue from castor oil. Um, the muffler bolts on uh, or screws on with a, a strap, put it round and tighten up the screws. Great design, nice and solid. The only problem is with a, a lot of these old engines with, um, with these screws, um, they can get quite worn and, and these ones in particular uh, were getting quite tired. So I, I thought, okay, fair enough, I'll replace them. The problem is a, a lot of these old um, Enya engines, I, I don't know whether this applies to all of them, but certainly a, a lot of the older ones, the threads, uh, the, the, the screws for the crankcase and the head, and also the... Um, uh, the silencer, they're a, a, a now obsolete Japanese thread, um, JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard. Um, and this thread is, um, it's, it's very similar to a standard metric thread, but it's actually called metric fine. Um, and it's got a pitch of, uh, of 0.6, whereas a standard um, thread, standard uh, metric 3mm thread has a 0.5 pitch. Um, so a standard 3mm um, metric screw will not fit. Um, one of the options I had, um, well I, I looked around and these screws are really really difficult to find. You can get smaller ones um, I can get 10 mil, 12 mil that will do the head um, and the crankcase, but I could not find anything um, in that thread of this length. Uh, it's got a thread length of, I think it's 28, uh, 28 mil, thereabouts, yeah, 27, 28 mil. Um, so I've kind of got two options really, um, or a few options I suppose, but um, one of the things that people had suggested to me was that I, I drill out and tap uh, the, uh, the muffler. But you can see it's quite um, a thin wall there and I would have to drill it out first and then tap it for a larger size. And I just, I, I didn't want to risk damaging the muffler um, because it's nice, it's original and these walls are very thin. So I in my search for um, looking for, for these longer screws in this 3mm um, uh, metric fine, the, the, the 0.6 pitch, uh, I came across a 3mm die, uh, which was of this pitch, 6mm, um, and uh, it was from a company in England, and um, I'll post the link below in the description. Um, so you can get one of these if you like. And this is, a, a, as I said, a 3mm um, 0.6 um, die. So what I thought I would do is I would um, make my own um, replacement screws. And I wanted to have uh, like a machine head, an Allen key head. Um, so something that was just a little bit more, um, a little bit more positive. This is one I've just made. Um, which is a replacement and works lovely. It's, uh, there you go, that's threaded to the original size thread. Having said that, the, the thread that I get when I, um, when I use this die is very, very slightly different um, to the original thread, um, but all oh, marginally. Um, it, it, it's not really um, worth uh, worth worrying about because as you can see it's a lovely smooth fit um, it's nice and tight there's no wobble um, and the diameter the finished diameter of these two 
uh, threads, the original, um, and this one that I've just created um, are very similar. And I can adjust those by adjusting the die anyway. So what I thought I'd do is I'd share with you what I've done, how I made this um, this new uh, this new bolt. Um, uh, I, just a, a, a caveat here, I'm not an engineer, um, I've never trained as an engineer, I'm an amateur hobby maker, I, I like making planes and, uh, and flying planes, so if you're a purist or an engineer you might want to look away at this point um, because there might be things that I do here that will make you wince or um, you, you, you may be not particularly correct. So, but anyway, at the end of the day, it's produced me a replacement bolt which works lovely um, and with a nice positive Allen key rather than using the originals. I will keep hold of these because they're quite a rare item. So I've got the originals there. So, to create this, I needed a blank or a template um, from which to start with. We can look at the, the measurements I've got here. Um, the... Uh, metric fine, what I'm trying to create, as I said, it's got a, uh, a 0.6 pitch and it's got 42.3 inches uh, teeth per inch and um, a diameter of 3mm because it's, uh, it's a 3mm um, screw that I'm trying to uh, recreate here. Um, as you can see, the standard metric, the pitch is wrong, uh, the size is right, but the teeth per inch is, is way over, so it's, you know, that's just not even in the ballpark. What I decided to use as a, as a blank, as a template, was um, to get some long um, five UNC uh, screws, bolts. Uh, now, I got these from uh, Model Fixings in the UK, fantastic um, uh, supplier, uh, really responsive to questions and, and uh, you know, advice, uh, giving advice and that. Um, they get stuff out really quick, really, really reasonable prices, so I'm quite pleased. Um, so what I did anyway was I decided to get some uh, five UNC bolts. Um, and the reason I got these is because they're slightly larger diameter, they're uh, 3.18 um, millimetres, so slightly larger. Um, so that will allow me to cut the thread on it. Um, I also, um, it, it's also got a, a very similar um, teeth per inch to the metric fine, but because it's that larger diameter, it's not something that we can use. It just, it just won't, won't do. Oops. So, um, and the pitch is very similar. And it's important that the uh, teeth per inch and the pitch are similar in the way that I, uh, I use this blank. I chose this length, it's, um, how long is it? I think it's, a 50, is it 50? 50 mil I think? Yeah, 50 mil, because it's got a shank on it, which is uh, 28, 28 mil long. So that will give me um, enough to create uh, my new, screw so I can I can thread this uh, this this blank section here and the advantage of getting this particular bolt is that because the the pitch is very similar and the number of teeth is very similar it allows me what I do is I cut it slightly long um, and I use the original thread to help me get started um, with my die rather than just starting with a complete blank. Um, I, I, I'm sure if you're an engineer and there's, uh, you know, you've got a well kitted out workshop, you could do this very easily. Um, I have very few tools here, I, 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 quite simple in, in the way I work. Um, and so I wanted something, I couldn't grind this, this end down to a, a point to let me start or, or to a, a bit of a taper. So I thought this screw of a similar pitch would give me a good starting point. Um, I tried cutting these um, down to length, um, but they're high tensile steel, they are really, really hard. And I blunted a couple of uh, junior hacksaw blades in the process. 
So, the way I uh, got it to length was a really heavy duty pair of side cutters. This is probably the bit that's going to make the engineers wince. And nipped it off and then I used a file just to take off the sharp edges. Um, which, and the file, even though this is high tensile, um, the file does neaten that top end up. So, there I have my, my blank, my template. Well, no, not a template, my blank, of which to start. Now, uh, originally I tried holding this in the vise with a couple of blocks of wood, and it's very difficult to get it um, solid and uh, vertical. But I found that the drawers on my vise are actually quite, um, quite soft. And as long as I tighten this up tight enough um, so that it doesn't spin, it doesn't do any damage to the bolt head which is quite nice because you don't want to create um, you know, a lovely new screw and then have a damaged head. But this seems to work fine. Um, so hopefully now I've, oh, with adjusting the, um, the die, what I've done is I've had it on the, on the biggest cut. So I put the die into the holder and I've tightened up this screw and open this die out as much as possible. So the first cut that I'm going to do on the die will be um, will be quite a big cut and probably too big. And then I will unscrew that, tighten these up, and just pinch that die up a little bit to make a, a, a final cut on the on the shaft and get my final thread. Um, this isn't actually a, a a high carbon die. It's, it's a carbon die, but it's not a high carbon die. Um, again, I'm not an engineer. If I'm using terms incorrectly, I, I apologise. But um, it was advertised as a carbon die. And I did think that I may have problems because these bolts are so hard um, and that they might actually break the die. It seemed to go fine yesterday. I'm going very slowly. I'm using lots of oil. Um, and so it seems to be working okay, but I think the, the, the trick is to just take it very, very steady. I just moved this out of the way, I don't want to get any swarf or bits of metal um, onto, my, uh, in, uh, onto my engine. So the trick is now to try and just get this located squarely using the existing thread that we have. Um, there we go. So now we're just on that existing bit of thread, a little bit of oil. And it's cutting quite easily now, um, but you certainly feel it when it comes down to the uh, to the blank shaft, which I think I am about to get to now. There we go. So from this stage on. It's just a very, very slow process, taking it forward and then back just to remove those little bits of swarf, um, plenty of lubrication as you go. Okay, I think that will do us. Okay, now, as I said, I had that, uh, the die expanded as much as possible to give me the biggest cut that I could. Um, if we measure the diameter of that, 
Right, that's coming in at 3.8. So that's coming in at about 3.8, 3.1. And these are what? 2.91. So this won't fit into the into the uh, the silencer or the muffler at the moment. I need to take that down just a little bit more um, like I did with the previous one. So I'll loosen off this screw which is expanding the die and I will tighten up these uh, these two side screws and that will pinch it closed and will give me a tighter a tighter cut. Right, we'll run that down. Just be careful to start it up, not to get, not to get the thread crossed and cut another thread. Um, okay, well that just took me a little bit of fiddling to get that started. I wanted to make sure that it was not crossed. Um, if it's still quite a, um, a hard cut, you can feel it taking material off, but actually it's going a lot easier than it was um, the first time. Just have a look at that. Okay, well that cut went a lot easier um, than the first cut. I still took it really slowly um, because I didn't want to risk doing any damage. And also, you don't know when you're coming uh, to the end of the thread and you're going to hit the, uh, the shaft. Um, and if you're giving it some welly at the time, you're going to damage or do some damage. Right, now let's see what thickness, what diameter that is. Well, that's about uh, 2.9 and my original, what did I say that was? Oh, 2.94 So it appears that that is now of the correct size. So Get the uh, get all the swarf out of it. And there we have um, I don't know whether you can see that. I need to there we have the new screw. I don't know how close this can focus. Now you can see there the last few millimeters. Um, or the first, the first few millimetres here is actually, uh, it's not particularly good thread. I, I've got a magnifying glass just to, to look at that. Um, actually it doesn't look too bad, but it's probably not particularly good because it's, it was cut over the top um, of the existing, uh, of the existing uh, 5 uh, UNC thread. Um, oh, and incidentally, you can see that even though I didn't um, protect the head, um, it hasn't damaged it. So, now, let's just try this in the, uh, in the silencer. Yeah, lovely. So, that's gone in... which is probably the full depth of oh, it's gone in over 10 millimeters anyway so there we have our two screws but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my side cutters sorry 
um, to this and I'm going to trim this down to a shorter length because I don't want this old thread here um, and actually the screw as it stands will be too long um, and will probably bottom out before it, uh, it tightens up the silencer bracket. So what I'm going to do, and I know this is probably a sin to do this um, rather than cutting it some other way, but in a paper bag because if you don't you'll never find it again as was nearly the case uh, with the first one I made it has made a, a bodge of the end but as I said I don't have a grinder I have very few power, power tools and so I need to um, just use this file to neaten up the end and get a decent and at the end of the day um, like I said earlier there are much better ways probably of doing this I don't have the kit and the equipment to do it um, but what I do end up with is a perfectly um, uh, reasonable um, bolt that I can use now in my uh, in my Enya silencer. Um, I'm just going to put this on, just to uh, just to recut that top where I've probably just made a little bit of a mess of it with the side cutters. There we go. Okay, well there we go, that is the, there we go, that's uh, the, the finished end, looks fine, that looks fine, and check it screws in, screws in fine. So, what we can do is take the silencer and check it out. The proof is in the pudding, so I've got my new bolt and the one I created earlier. Could do with more than one pair of hands to do this in front of the camera. Uh, the, uh, the company I mentioned earlier, modelfixings.com um, in the UK, I will uh, put a link um, in the description below and um, check them out. They're really good. I'll be really impressed with them. Um, and like I say, they've, they've got a good, good selection of stuff and pretty reasonable prices, um, including quite reasonable postage, uh, even airmail, which uh, is something these days. You can end up paying more postage, airmail postage than the, the cost of the item sometimes. So there we go. Just have to be careful not to over tighten these now. I can get a lot of purchase on. But there, we have our new bolts for or machine screws, whatever you call them, um, for my lovely Enya 35 and silencer. So I'm really pleased with that, giving it new life. I could have used these, but the chances are they'll strip out eventually and I'll end up either slipping off, scratching, scratching my aeroplane or scratching the, the engine or something. So these are just so much more secure. And I just thought, I would share this with you today.